Peter Skin and the Eco Defenders, Chapter 44. As they were the ones most directly affected by it, Rory the Lion, Tub Thumper, and Chumbawamba the Elephants, Osero Puddleby the Hippo, and Uga the Gorilla, called an all-paws-on-deck meeting, which all of us animals understood to be an all-inclusive meeting. It was not meant to literally be attended only by those animals with paws. It was merely a figure of speech. Those with feet instead of paws, such as humans, birds, and so forth, were also implicitly invited to attend. Rory took his place on a rocky outcropping at the edge of the valley and proclaimed to the vast crowd assembled, Friends, humans, animals, lend me your ears. A great danger will persist and only get worse if we don't do something about it right now. What is it, friend lion? I asked, knowing what was coming, but wanting Rory to cut to the chase. So we could get to it, finish the job, and get back home again. I was anxious to settle down and start a family with Robet in 2525 Xenia. I'm talking about poaching, Rory answered. The heartless hunting of animals to satisfy greed or feed an ego is the problem of which I speak. Humans are poaching animals, especially elephants for their tusks, rhinos for their horns, gorillas for their hide and meat, heads, hands, and feet. And lions, too, for no other reason than so that these nimrods can mount our heads on the walls of their man caves as a souvenir or trophy. And it will only get worse if we don't put a stop to it now. Naturally, Osero Puddleby said, now addressing the crowd, Rory, Tub Thumper, Chumbawamba, Uga, and I have the most skin in this game, so to speak, but we would certainly appreciate the help of all of you to present a united front against this evil and potentially genocidal practice. We are with you, Stripe said. The 10 quintillion animals on Earth will back you up and support you. 10 quintillion is actually a fairly good estimate, said Alexis. It is calculated that for each human, there are a billion animals, not counting insects, which together are as numerous as the combined numbers of mammals, reptiles, birds, and fish. Thus, we far outnumber humans, and when we join together in a common cause, there's nothing humans will be able to do to stop us. That's right, said Tub Thumper. When the crowd of creatures, the mass of animaldom, with some human assistance, accomplish this great work of putting a permanent end to poaching, we will no longer be mocked by those who dismiss us with a sneer in their voice and smiles of derision. Terrible storms have passed over us. We will no longer forgive and forget or throw up our paws in resigned surrender. We will growl in warning and, if necessary, Follow through on those threats by spattering a few red drops for history to remember us by. We will have arrived then, never more to be taken for granted. None will call us dumb brute beasts ever again. Tub Thumper's oration was hailed by all. A mighty roar of approbation for it echoed through the canyon. It was considered the best speech any of them had ever heard. It has been remembered as the Rift Valley Address. So everyone present was in harmony. All the animals and the three men agreed on the course of action that had to be taken in order to prevent poaching of elephants, rhinos, gorillas, lions, or any animals killed for sport, for money, for ego, or to appease misguided ideas on medicinal curatives. Even Warble, who at one time had wanted to lead hunting safaris and at that juncture couldn't have cared less about animals, thinking they were useless and taking up valuable space and oxygen, was enthusiastic about being part of Operation Poach Free. Seldom in history has a man's character changed so completely and so quickly 
as had warbles. Now it was time to plan and to practice. Immediately thereafter, we would proceed with the anti-poaching initiative. <laughs>